All right, good evening, good evening, good evening. It's the Safe House Podcast We're back on live and in living color. And the beauty of being live and in living color is that you get to hear all the stuff that's happening around you. Right. So it's your man, Pastor Ferguson, on with your boy, Mitchell Harper. Mitchell, what's going on, man? What's happening? What's happening, everybody? We see y'all in the chat already. Good evening. Good to be with y'all. How are you? I am good. I'm I'm legit good. Um, yesterday, um, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Yesterday, I became a great uncle. Oh, snap. Yeah. Uh, me and Marissa's niece just had a baby. Wow. Baby boy. Well, congratulations. Nine, nine pounds, nine ounces. Ooh-wee. Two weeks Ooh-wee. early, boy. Big boy. <laughs> Thank Telling goodness you. it was two weeks uh, early. I mean, we talked about <laughs> Shit. So yeah, Ooh. so that was a that was a good thing. Um saw my grandfather. Um saw my grandfather today. Um moving real good, getting back to himself, man. Just good. hype about that. Just glad that he's doing well and everything like that. So I cannot complain too much. And we have navigated the storm that happened around here. Yeah. And yeah. you know, things kind of passed through. So here we are doing our thing. So grateful to God for that. And grateful that we're in the midst of everything here. So can't complain one bit. So I'm glad to be with you. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in, man. You sure? Yeah. Positive. Oh, we, we tired, but we we persevere, right? Uh, for sure. We for take sure. our natural, we can get them. I hear you, man. <laughs> Shoot. That's how you got to do it these days. You know, just can't go around saying that we're going to go sleep on the job. Or nothing, well, you know? Exactly. Yeah, they don't pay me for that, unfortunately. They, they should, man, if they paid all of us for that, man, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as always, on the Safe House podcast, we're on 6.30 every Wednesday, 6.30-ish, as we like to say, every Wednesday, um, unless otherwise told in person, live and in living color and online. And if you're catching this on the replay, thank you for catching it on the replay and just telling you in advance, always share. Don't matter what you do, you need to share. That's the first thing you learn in kindergarten back in the day. Learn Sharing is caring, and you got to learn how to share. So make sure that you share. Matter of fact, if you just like me, I'm going to go on here and share now like I always do. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Just share the link with the rest of the world that knows me. And, you know, whether they come on and hang out or not, that's on them. But I did my part. Hey, yeah. Make sure you do your part, as always. Um, at Claire United Methodist Church, we're here 10 a.m. every Sunday in person and online and excited about what's coming up as we start a new series this Sunday called Stoke the Flame. Ooh. Not just a monthly series. No, 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 no. It's a Pentecost series. What? There you go. We're going to go all the way up to Pentecost. And just for those that don't even know, it's the, this year, the Pentecost is the third Sunday in May. So I already looked that up. So just keep that in mind, you know. Because just in case you feel like wearing some white and wearing some red, you know what I'm saying, on that day, you, you never know. I may say some crazy stuff like that, and you know. But anyway, you might want to catch on fire. That's right. You know, but we're on the way there, we're going to learn how to stoke that flame so we can not only catch on fire but stay on fire. Yes, sir. So we begin that new series this Sunday at 10 a.m. As always, make sure that you are in the chat. If you're in the chat, listen to me need y'all to hear this because you don't know how blessed how much of a blessing it is when y'all comment in the chat we read all this stuff we read it live we get it live everything so when you're in the chat make sure that you are typing questions your thoughts in the chat um if you want those things spoken about or even brought up let it be known in the chat even if you are watching after the live we'll put those questions in there we are always thinking about the next step. So we want to make sure that everybody contributes. If you are in person and you know how to keep one part of your stuff silent <laughs> and you decide to be in the chat, you can chat your questions. You can write your questions down. You can do whatever it takes. We want to make sure that we're having the kind of conversation that blesses people. All right. Um, Mitchell, will you open us up in prayer and then we'll do our best to get started. Dear God, thank you for another day. Thank you for gathering us here safely together, not only in person, but uh, virtually as well, Lord. Um, 
we just thank you for an opportunity to come together to study your word, to get to know you better. Help us to come humbly before you uh, as we dive in, just ready to to learn something and, and ready to to engage as a community and wrestle with the text that we have before us today. Um, open our minds, open our hearts, open our ears, Lord, um, and just help us to soak it in as much as possible so that when we leave out of here, we leave out of here knowing you a little better. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight, um, we t- we're talking about the humility needed to advocate. And we're in Galatians 6, 1 through 10. And before we even get to the text, I I don't know. I don't know. I've just, I've been in a real funny place. Um, normally, like when I'm having thoughts and when I'm trying to work through ideas and concepts, I'm, I'm trying, I, so there are times when I just, I just want to write something down. I want to put something to paper. I want to get the thought out. And sometimes... I just have these long streaks. Mm. And it's been a minute. Like, I've posted stuff on social media, you know. I post stuff about what we do at the church and all these different things. But I think I've I done been just inundated with a bunch of mess mm. on my timeline. And I haven't touched none of it. I haven't dealt with any of it. But there was this one thing that, and it bothered me. And I, and and I, and it, and I, and if you don't mind, yeah, I want to unpack it. Come with it, and I promise it'll go with what we're trying to discuss. And I don't know if you've heard about it. You might have, you might not have. I'm not on Facebook, so probably. Well, not. you know, it's it's kind of gotten into mainstream a little bit. Okay, but apparently, there was this um, men's conference that was happening. <laughs> See, I knew, I knew. Look, look, I knew you knew. I knew you. I knew. didn't know that's where we were going, but okay, that's right. where we're going. Okay, but you're gonna understand mm-hmm. not just why, not just the why of why we're going here, but I, I'm I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. So the gist of it is because I haven't dug deep enough, and I can take all the points of view and you know, kind of whatever. But here are the facts. There's a men's conference, and at this men's conference, they had this guy who apparently was asked by the pastor and the and the people that were forming the conference to use his gymnastic talent. Uh huh. Allowing him to use his gymnastic talent for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Okay, I am uh, once again, anything that I am saying, I am saying it strictly as I haven't dug all the way into it, all into the minutia of it. But that's where some of this is beginning. And apparently. This person who according to reports recently gave his life to Christ, or maybe it wasn't recent, but it was, he, he's now a believer. Okay. Okay. And he was asked to do whatever this was that he was asked to do. Suddenly a speaker that was asked to come to this conference, mm-hmm. it was his time to be up and he decided to, what, what's the word that's usually used? To rebuke, to rebuke <laughs> yeah. the pastor that started this conference, that had this conference for the different ways in which things were done. And he decided to openly rebuke the pastor, and he's nationally known. He's all that kind of stuff. And after that rebuke, I guess the pastor asked him to leave. Because what you because apparently what you're not going to do <laughs> is try to talk about me in front of anybody, especially when I invited you, and do left. But the object, but the but the person that I'm actually most concerned about in the story mm-hmm. is the guy. Sure, because what ends up happening in situations like this, 
is when people go and dig into your past. And this is apparently what has happened. People dug into his past and, of course, discovered that he was not on, he was not just, you know, talented as a gymnast, but used to do some things in the adult entertainment world. Okay. All right. So they brought that past to the surface. And, of course, social media, what do we do? We take the past, put it with the present, and we say that people are no longer what they say they are. And we and incapable of change. Exactly. Now, while <laughs> there could have been a million different ways to do different things, and everybody got methods, and I don't know what the method or the rhyme or the reason was for what was done. Mm-hmm. The person that gets hurt in the process, in my opinion, is the person that was trying to use whatever they were asked to use for whatever reason, because now people have dug into and try to discount his change. Here's why I'm so bothered. I'm bothered because let's just say, Mm -hmm. because let's just say he was a recent convert yeah let's say he like brand spanking new was there nobody that would have tried to cover him stay out there for him be there for him whatever to make sure that nobody would harm him or anything else Mm -hmm. What responsibility do we have to make sure that we, when we have the opportunity to set people up for success, actually put them in positions to succeed? Mm-hmm. And then I thought the reason that a lot of people do not set, the, set things up to help people, especially if they're trying to find ways to love God, worship God, promote God through their being is that some of us have lost the humility. Mm. We've lost the humility of what it means to be a believer in Jesus Christ. That we lack the humility necessary, right? to be able to advocate because then we find ourselves now in positions where we could be judgmental, Mm -hmm. where we could find ourselves feeling that we are, as the old church might say, holier than thou. And I guess I'm bothered because people think they read scriptures properly and they look at stuff And and I'm convinced people don't read. And I'm not talking about in that stereotypical, you know, African-American community statement of folk don't read. I'm talking about anybody and everybody. (laughs) Folk don't read. And the reason they don't read is because they would have to be accountable for stuff. Mm. So what we going to do is read first. And I mean read, Mm -hmm. you know, because... I need people to see that we are called to be a little more humble than we act. And I think we need just a self check. Is that cool? <laughs> Makes sense to me. So, um, Broham, mm-hmm. if you don't mind reading this scripture, and you know, and if you don't mind, allow me to have this moment because it's hilarious to me when I see it. Uh oh. So we are in Galatians 6, 1 through 10, and here comes the moment. Read! (laughs) He knows where that came from. That's why. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Galatians 6, chapter, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 10. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, 
You who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Mm. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be. Mm. Here's the verse that gets me. Mm. Is the one that says, keep watch on yourself, mm -hmm. lest you too be tempted. Yep. It's the part of the verse. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Why is that so important to me? Because of how Paul starts off. If anyone's caught in a transgression... You who are, is it, is it, is it, um, I, I want to make sure I'm reading it right because, you know, sometimes I might be missing something. Sure. Did it say those of you who are denominational leaders? <laughs> I don't see that anywhere in the text. No. Okay. okay. Let me try, let me try, let me try again. Uh -huh. Let me try again. You who are pious. Does it say that? I don't see that's absent from the text as well. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I'm just making sure. Those of you who are perfect attendees at church. That one's definitely not in here. I'm I'm just I'm I'm trying to make sure that I read scripture critically. Uh-huh. Okay. It says you who are spiritual. Spiritual. Which suggests that you must be governed mm. by something on the inside of you. Mm. So what's the spiritual thing to do when somebody's been caught in a transgression or they are in a mess or they're in a situation or they're in a circumstance? You got to start not with your emotions, but with your spirit. Yeah. It says this. You are spiritual restore in a spirit of gentleness. What didn't happen in the situation I brought up? Yeah. No matter where, no matter where you fall on it, and you could come up with eighteen thousand different things. The, th the one major thing that did not come up was this: there was nothing gentle about what was taking place. A bunch of people puffing their chest out, mm -hmm. throwing their weight around. Right. Yep. How you going to throw your weight around and that ain't the church that you've been called to pastor? Oof. Ain't that crazy? Oof. All this stuff. People, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to say something that's going to make a whole lot of people mad. Just because you think you can rebuke somebody does not mean that you really know how to do the rebuke properly. If you're going to correct, right, people, people like to correct folk. If you're going to correct somebody... You don't correct them and embarrass them at the same time. Mm. Mm. Yeah, let that marinate for a minute. You don't go out of your way to so-called correct somebody and embarrass them at the same time. Yeah. You can have a difference of opinion about all types of things, right? Right? But the first thing you should do, if you're spiritual, you should be able to what? It, it, the text says restore. Restore. Restoration doesn't necessarily happen in public. 
And here it is. Restoration is an act of love. It is not an act of destruction. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to restore you, think about this. If I've made a mess, don't you think, let me, let me, and let me be clear. If I have a conscience and I know I made a mistake, do you think I need to hear someone else tell me I made a mistake and keep on beating the point home mm -hmm. that I done made a mistake and I done messed up and keep on beating it out of me as if I don't know I've made a mistake? I think I think one of the uh, I think the pastor who put on that conference took offense because the pastor who called him out he he quoted what's the scripture that says you go to your brother quietly mm -hmm. and you know have that conversation and whatnot and it makes me think of that verse but it also makes me think of the verse of you know you you looking at the speck in somebody else's eye mm -hmm. and you haven't handled the log in your own daggone eye. and. And there are a whole lot of people walking around with big old logs. And they can only see according to the log. And they think that someone's splinter is actually a mess mm -hmm. when the truth is your vision is messed up. Yep. Yep. If anyone's caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Now watch this next part. Keep watch on yourself lest you too be tempted. In other words, you could be in the same spot if yep. you ain't careful. Yep. This is the humility that needs to happen. When I see somebody going through stuff or dealing with stuff, I got to have enough humility not to humiliate to know that it's only by the grace of God that it's not you in that situation. See that? And and every and look, and there's so many, and there's so many people right now that feel they have the credence to do certain things. Be like, look, <laughs> no. And this is the struggle. I'm speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. The struggle is that we are called to demonstrate grace. Right? And sometimes grace looks very different in different situations. Absolutely. For instance, <laughs> some people may know certain things about parts of my life and how I've had to deal with certain types of people. Here's what some people don't know. Certain people have dealt with me in certain ways that a lot of people know about. And even that person knows they did wrong and they have never apologized. But the grace is I never expose them for who they are. Sure. As easy as it may be and as as good as it might feel. Especially when you got the evidence. Mm. Ain't it crazy? When you got all the evidence in your hands and you never expose them, they don't realize that they are living on grace. They feel they may feel that you should act a certain way towards them. Because you're a Christian. No, no, no. Sometimes grace looks very different. And restoration looks very different because I didn't humiliate when I could have. Yeah. And we're years later, and I still got it all and could still do it if I had a bad day. But why would I not do something that I felt like I could have done? Because most people will say, well, you got every right to do it. You know why? Because it could be me. Yeah. And that's the thing that people don't want to wrestle with. It could be you. You could be in the situation and you're going to want somebody to look at you different. Mm -hmm. So why? So now that I done said all that, why then are we not practitioners of that kind of restoration, church? Mm. I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying in general. I'm talking in generalities. Why are we not active practitioners of that? Part of it, part of it is this next part. <laughs> sure enough, God don't like ugly, Sister Pat. I know it. But here's the, 
But here's the, but here comes the other part. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. In other words, if you pay attention to what you're doing, you ain't got to try to compare your work to somebody else's work. You know, you know what's crazy? We still do all this stuff like, well, I do da 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 and you, you, you bring up your track record of stuff, like you got to compare yourself to everybody else around you, and we all in the same race. We may not do the same thing, but we in the same race. We go into the same place, and we trying to do the same thing, and we trying to serve the same Christ, and all of a sudden you want to come up with all the reasons why you ahead of the No, you ain't ahead of nothing. Yeah, your your bona fides don't don't remove you from the expectation that that is the responsibility of what we're trying to do. Right. And what makes it worse is that there are people right now that think they somebody. I don't like I don't like somebody's. You know that? I hang out with nobodies on a on a and people be like, what do you mean? You you know a whole bunch of people. I'll be like, no, 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 no. Hear me when I say this. I like hanging out with nobodies. And what I mean by that is not that they are nobodies, but they would do the same thing they're doing right now, whether you knew who they were or not. Mm-hmm. Those are the cats I love hanging out with. I despise hanging out with somebody's. They get on my nerves. Can I, and can I get this off my chest? This might be. This might be the introvert in me, and I'm having an extroverted moment, but feel me on this. I don't care who you are. If you don't pass the vibe test, we ain't kicking it. Come on. Yeah. For God's sake, That's quit, a word. Try, quit trying so hard. I'm not that guy. I I, I could care less. I, I, I mean, I... I, I I mean, I know what I got going on. You can read my bio. You can go to the website. Only reason there's a bio on the website is because, you know, we know that people got to know who you're dealing with. That's the only reason I got a bio on on the church website. And that's only a and wait, as I heard someone say, if you read my bio, all you're reading is about where I've been. Mm-hmm. You don't know who I am now. You're just reading about where I've been. <laughs> Shoot. So you don't know me. You just know about where I've been. Yeah. I like hanging out with nobody. I like hanging out with folk. They would do and say and dot, 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 no matter what. Because they don't, they don't have to compare themselves to nobody. They ain't trying to compare themselves. No, they got enough self-worth within them to know who they are and all that. That is, it's a beautiful thing. You know? That's right. There you go. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about someone who sa- who can save anybody. That's it. That's the jam. That's yep. it. That's real. I like I like hanging out with nobodies. Somebody's get on my nerves. You got to prove to me who you are. No, 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 no. You don't pass the vibe test. Because when we all get to heaven, mm. Mm. <laughs> When we literally, and then let me skip those in between parts. When we all see Jesus, I'm going to shout. And it's not going to be because he let me get a doctor. I'm going to shout because I made it in. Yeah. And show sure enough, I'm going to shout with some people that made it in that I know I was connected with down here. That, that matters. But if you want to live your life for the affirmation of folk that will flip on you in five seconds, you go right ahead. Go right ahead. Have at it. And you can t- and look, and you can take my share too. It's just like pumpkin pie. I don't like it. You can have my piece and you can take the whole pie too. I don't, I don't fool with it. Right. So, so where does that, what is, what is the thing that, trips us up into having that thought process is that we is that we forget we have convenient amnesia mm. 
They mourn. Convenient amnesia is when you choose to forget mm-hmm. where you've come from. And, so, and most of the people in here were here Sunday. Y'all, it's I don't shout about the about where I arrived. I shout about how I got there because I can't forget that. I can't forget being broke, busted, and disgusted. I can't forget having a job, losing a job, and still having to try to go to school while doing this and while doing that. I can't forget that. I, it, it's been almost, it's been over, tw- over 20 years. My first job was as a janitor. Yes, I'm the senior pastor of a church, but I still know how to sweep, mm-hmm. mop, and clean up stuff. And if I absolutely had to, I know where I could go to get that job and make $25 an hour. Yeah. I don't forget that stuff. But a lot of people want to forget. And there's reasons why people want to forget. They think forgetting means that they're healed. No, that's not true. You, can't, you want to forget because you want to numb yourself. And then you want to forget the fact that God brought you out and all the other things that God provided for you to get out. You want to forget all that. And then you want to put out this new narrative that you made yourself. Mm-hmm. You ain't do nothing. You didn't make yourself. You ain't no self-taught nothing. You didn't pull yourself by your own bootstraps because you don't want to talk about the fact you had no boots and you had no straps. Yeah. You just got the boots. And you showing up just got the straps. And you just learned how to tie them. This text speaks to the fact that Paul doesn't want the Galatian church to forget it's not just about the restoration of others, but he don't want them to forget. Because if you're, your, your humility comes through in the way you treat people. Yeah. You, you, and then think about later on in the text where it talks about sowing and reaping. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Sow to your flesh. Act out of your own stuff. Is going to be corrupt. Correct. You sow to the spirit, it's going to be eternal life. But then also puts in there, don't get weary in doing good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in other words, you are going to get tired, but don't give up. <laughs> Why? In due season, you're going to reap if you don't give up. So you got to know, what am I sowing? <laughs> Better way to put it, because now I'm talking too much, but let me put it a different way. What am I projecting into your soil? Yeah. What am I projecting into your soil? Am I projecting seeds of trying to make you like me? Right. Yeah. Or am I projecting seeds that say God can lift you from where you are? And then we're going to wait and see how God does it, because some plant, some water, but God ultimately what gets the increase? Right. So if we're not if we are not humble enough to realize that we're in the position we're in because God brought us here. And then if we're in a position where somebody is going through and we're in a position to bless somebody and we don't understand that's a humbling experience, then we're going to still try to sow stuff based on us and not based on God. So. I want to ask this before we move too far past it because I, I need to clear up something that confused me. Mm-hmm. Um, in verse 2, it says, bear one another's burdens. Yeah. Um, but then in verse 5, it says, each one should carry his own load. So can you sort of clear up that what sounds like a contradiction to make sure that I'm not missing the point here? When So then we would have to look at it as two two different contexts within a 10 verse stretch. Okay. Bear one another, right? So you're talking about bear one another's burden. So if you catch someone or if someone is in a situation, they're not strong enough to navigate that thing by themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. But eventually, right. Eventually as they get strengthened, you're going to be able to what? Bear your own load. Yeah. Right. Right. When you get okay. it, so okay. if you're in a situation, better better way to put it, if I see you 
and you just sprained your ankle. Mm -hmm. You can't put no weight on it, right? No matter what degree sprain. I, I see you. You sprained your ankle. What do you need in that moment? Yeah. You might be able to hop along, but after a certain period, you can't. So you learn to what? Bear one another, right? But eventually, when you flip that thing around, right, and you go into the next phase where if you don't learn how to be humble enough to help somebody through, right, you need to realize that at some point, everybody's work going to get tested. Yeah. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing to deal with my own stuff? Because eventually, God ain't going to grade my work and your work based off of my work. No, right. God is still going to grade us, so to speak. And in, and, he, and here's what's crazy. Jesus, we don't all get the same test. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to cheat off my test and think that your, your answer, that, that the answers that I have for my test are going to apply to yours? No, I'm not tested in the same way. So I do have to pay attention to my own stuff. But the key is I got to realize if I'm going to help you, I need to be humble enough to know that if you're down right now, it could be me next. Right. Yeah. So I don't come to you as a person saying, oh. Just do what I did. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Why can't you be more like me? That's ridiculous. You got to be able to be like, come on. Mm -hmm. Whatever we got to do to get you up. I'm with you in it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And eventually, and, and then eventually, you're going to be able to be strengthened for your journey. And then you're going to be what? Ready to get back at it. Because I got what? My stuff I got to do too. I got the life that I have to live, and it's not that we are living different lives per se. It is that we're living, we're going in our own directions into the same place, if that makes sense. Eventually, I got to get back in my lane to do what I need to do. I cannot judge how this thing is going on because eventually if I trip over my feet, I want somebody to be able to what? Help, Help me you. back up. Yeah. Right? So we have to be able to be mindful. It's it's a we thing. Nobody's an island to themselves. Yeah. But also, you got to learn how to deal with your work, too. I was having this conversation. I can't remember who I was talking to recently. But in just talking about how much, I think so often we think that as we grow in faith, it is to not necessarily dictate, but, like, it's it's evangelism. And it's always evangelism, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, if you aren't stopping to do the actual work where you grow in your understanding of yourself, then there's no actual way that you can do healthy work with other people because your inability to know yourself is actually hindering how you create that connection with other people. It's, we put this heavy, this heavy weight on evangelism and we lighten up on discipleship. Yeah. Yep. That's what it is. And so often we think that discipleship is discipling other people, not understanding that if you are going to disciple other people, you also need to be being discipled. And that and then that takes it back to what? I came to your disciples with my son. Uh -huh. And I thought they could help me because I seen them with you. Mm -hmm but they could do nothing. Why then, as Charles Edward Booth would have said, why were the disciples guilty of false advertising? They were guilty of false advertising because Jesus unveiled after they asked the question, why couldn't we do it? He said, these things come, he's like, you've been with me all this time and you haven't paid attention to nothing I've done. These things come through prayer, fasting. These come through focusing on disciplines that will help you in your growth. But we don't talk that way yeah. because what people want is the instantaneous. So, and maybe this links up to what you were just talking about, but Sister Anderson in the chat said, uh, I'm sitting here and I've been restored, but then when you go through the devil and his advocates to try and seek, and the, the devil and his advocates, they try to seek and destroy so what should my thought process be? So that's when that's when we can line up with a, a few things. Number one, that is where we have to deal with 
what is our community doing? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes you're, sometimes we always go to the part of the transgression piece, but there is sometimes we need to understand that though this is what scripture is laying out for restoration when it comes to transgression, you have to also dig deeper and realize this is about community, right? The community should be set up in a way that if you feel like you're going through, you ought to be able to what? Talk about it. Deal with it. Whatever. And watch this. Not get attacked by your community. Yeah. Because you, this is literally, literally the name of the podcast is the Safe House Podcast. Because we say this should be a safe space for people to deal with with all their stuff, whether we have answers or not. Right. And we don't do that as the church because we want everything to be so definitive and black and white that we don't always have to deal with the gray. And here's the thing. 95, wait, no, 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 let me say it right because I'm about to mess up the math. <laughs> 90% of the world lives in gray. Yeah. The other 10%, five on each end, live in the extremes. And do you know why they live in the extremes? Because they feel that's the only place they can really go because they can't navigate the gray. Yeah, the gray is too too confusing, too scary, too... If we don't live in absolutes, then what do I actually believe? And then you, and then you, discover, then you discover that living in gray means that you have room to grow. Somebody should put that in the chat yeah. for posterity. The church is dying because we feel like we don't have the... We don't have the willingness to live in the gray. And here's the and here's the thing. And here's the and here's the and here's the crazy part. You know, you know, you want to know where the gray is in scripture? Mm. Y'all gonna think I'm crazy. No, y'all not, because you know I'm crazy. <laughs> but here's where the gray is actually in scripture. Where scripture talks about when God speaks, like, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my way, says the Lord, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, mm. so are my thoughts above yours which means that there are still things that we just don't understand about God. Yep. So guess what, church? We already living in the gray. You trying to learn about, look, you still trying to learn about God on a certain thing, on a certain continuum. And while some of y'all are trying to act like, <sighs> there we go. See, Lord, have mercy. I'm loving this movement in the chat right yeah, yeah. now. Here it is. Here it is, y'all. We live, we live in the gray because then there's another scripture that people quote, but we now see through a glass darkly. Mm. But then face to face, right? That was, that was Paul writing in that um, 1 Corinthians 13. But we, for right now, we see through a glass darkly. But then our vision gets sharpened as we grow. When I was a child, I spoke, understood, and thought as one. But when I became an adult, I put away childish things. Watch this. Everybody ain't, everybody ain't grown. And that's what. And, and age has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Everybody ain't grown spiritually. Everybody ain't grown in a certain space. You still are trying to figure out stuff. Can you imagine? Can you imagine living your whole life thinking that God functions in a certain way and then God allows life to hit you in such a way to let you know that whatever you thought, it was incomplete. It wasn't wrong. Yeah. But it was incomplete. How do we how do we move to a point where that's not destabilizing? <laughs> Because the way we do it starts with our humility, and that's how it leads to these points. That's a beautiful way to segue. How do you remain humble when you're called to advocate? How do you, how do you get through this? You got to first recognize that temptation can get anyone. That's the first thing. That's number one. It can get anybody. Ain't no... Uh, Ain't nobody exempt. So, so let's get something clear. Ain't nobody got the right 
to open up their big mouth and begin to speak as if they have never, ever been tempted. Not only been tempted, but yielded to that temptation. <laughs> Y'all sing, wait, sing to him and line the whole night. <laughs> <whole. laughs> Y'all sing, I'm talking about, they sing it with gusto yeah. too. They sing, they sing it from their soul and then, and, and they forget. Yeah, you yielded, yeah. you yielded. Yeah. And the, and the and the and the songwriter said, "For yielding is sin." Yep. yep. On that that wait wait wait, so she ain't gonna say it for me, but I'll say it for her. That part, you see, what I'm <laughs> she didn't say it for me, so I say it for her. that part. The pe people will sing, "Yield not to temptation," but then they get a little quiet on the next part. Mm -hmm. For yielding is sin. Yeah. So what do you do when you've yielded? <laughs> to the thing that you boasted as if you could never be tempted by it. Oof. Oh. I'm not you, trying you to, to turn that fan back on. I am not. <laughs> Ooh. But, that's, but that's where we, if we gonna talk, let's talk. That's why I am, not, that's why I live and function the way I do. Yeah. Because I know, I, we teach our son, we, we teach our son, look him straight in the eye, nine years old, Tell them, son, we gonna fail you. Yeah, yeah. Whatever expectations you have of us, sometime, somewhere, you, we gonna we gonna fail you in some way at best. We don't try. That's not our intent. That's not how we do it. That's not that's not what we trying to do. But some point, you are gonna look at us and be like, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh -huh. You gonna look at us and be like, uh? And I gotta look at myself and be like, mm. But I kept it all the way funky with you from the jump. I'm gonna come short. Yeah, and 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 again, scripture, all have sinned yeah. and fallen short of the glory of God, and yet God still loves us to restore us. Come on now, come on now. Therefore, why would we not do the same? Thing? Oh my God! Come on, come on. I'm trying, y'all. You want to take this question real quick? Yes, let's take the question. Let's go. I've gone down this alley. Now, I mean, actually, you, I knew that was coming. But the fact is, I may have, to some degree, felt the temptation, but I didn't follow through the whole thing. Sure, I had a mess and everything. I was looking out for somebody that was like me, homeless, okay? That was it. But everybody blew this out of proportion because I never went over the line. Okay? Now, the thing about this, sure, I understood and got you guys' message, but I not once go over the line with that person because I understood her and I was trying to help her because I felt uh, uh, a sorry in a roundabout way because what she does and how she lives, but I was also trying to walk uh, beside her, and the fact is I have a special ability to relate to other homeless people in a certain way that other people don't. So when you offer them certain avenues or options and show them kindness and care, they eventually, you know, they see that, but I was trying to also work the, my uh, skills into her becoming a Christian. But since this has been basically on me, I understand that, but you don't understand the fact is what I was, you know, the second half of this story, okay? I understood, I understand everything that you guys are talking about, but the fact is, what you saw, I'm going to put it out there too, straightforward. Camera was not actually the thing that actually happened. So, you know, because I knew that she had to go back out on the street because she is an addict. She takes drugs. And to feed somebody that is addicted to it, you can't just cold turkey on them because the fact is, Long-term care in any facility, they put you in a room with nothing. 
because I've seen it done with other friends of mine. I'm telling you, it, your mind goes totally freaky. But as far as what I was trying to do, but I never stood to step the line because the fact is, I believe what God is telling me. God has showed me ways that most people would never understand. But after the night, uh, things have been happening while behind the scenes while everybody doesn't really pay attention because I have been working on leaving this state for good. And I have good possibilities lined up and if I don't show up next Wednesday, I'll probably be living somewhere else because you guys don't understand that the people that I socialize with are very powerful, very entertaining, and they understand me more and more. But the love of God has shown me things that normally nobody else would sh be seen. But I love y'all, and I understand y'all, but you're trying to, and like you said, keep me down, and I, I tear myself far worse down than you ever think. And right now, I have been back to drinking, and I have been crawling on the cement for the last two days, trying to figure out my next place to sleep. And if I'm lucky enough tonight to find that spot again, I'll be all right. But till then, one day at a time. But please, don't get me wrong. I've had, I've been tore down so much in 40 years of prison that even my stepfather used to mentally destroy me. So I have had far, far worse than what you believe. And people continue mm -hmm. to you know, rip at what I have left. But I will never let you do it because I'm a lot stronger than you. But right now I'm shaking in my boots because I'm actually having a, ver a nervous attack right now. But uh, with that, I understand and I appreciate you. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, that tearing down can make us unexpectedly susceptible to unexpected temptations. Um, but not only is that why it's important for us to have space of, spaces of community like this, but there's people in the chat already asking God to guide your footsteps as you, as you move through like, like this community, when you have the power of a community behind you, it makes, the temptations that get put in front of you so often, it makes you more capable to withstand those those things because you know that you have support. You know that there are people who who genuinely love and care for you and who, who can hold you accountable, but who can also give you grace where grace is necessary. Um, so I don't necessarily but that, say. But that actually, the way that you segue, segues into the second thing that has to occur, mm. you got to continue your personal work. Yeah. Yep. You got to continue your personal work. Here's the here's the other piece to the challenge. I still got stuff I got to deal with within myself. Amen. I got to deal with me. Mm -hmm. I think we we kind of yeah, before we even came on and we were just it was just the two of us here. I was playing a uh, Monopoly Go. Yep. And then started playing a bunch of different little games here and there. <laughs> And I and I was sharing with you that um, all of a sudden I find my stress level has been extremely decreased over time. I just went to the doctor and, you know, there's things I got to work on, but it's not as many. Look, my cholesterol good, my, my, you know, everything else, you know, I am diabetic. I got to deal with the A1C still ain't as bad as it was at one time. Yeah. I still, that's always a battle. But the thing that was most impressive to my doctor with all the things that I've been dealing with is that my blood pressure was immaculate. Come on now. 
Now how now how in the world and and without going into a bunch of stuff, but all things I've been dealing with personally over the last month and a half, I should be like something something I should have blown about seven gaskets. Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. it should it should have already been out of whack. And you know they coming in, they checking my stuff. It's like perfect. I'm like, well, praise God. It's oh, because tell me what, tell me what you're doing because 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 mine ain't. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's but it, but it's the but it's what we talk about all the time. It's the work. Mm-hmm. People don't think that dealing with yourself is actually work. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And let's be clear. And 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 for all of y'all that are in the chat and all of y'all that are in the um. And I need and I need y'all to know this in the chat. I'm about to say something, and if y'all don't comment on this that I'm about to say, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretty much say and believe that we ain't that we ain't friends. The pressure is on. <laughs> I got too much work to do on me mm-hmm. to be fully engaged with what goes on with you. I got too much work to do on me to be nosy about what is going on with you. You I, hear me? I appreciate how you said that. You said you said fully engaged. I'm not going I'm not disconnecting from you. Right. But like I can't my sole focus cannot be on whatever mess you got going on because you refuse to do your own personal work as well. I mean, and thank you. There you go. But that's but that's but but that's the stuff we don't talk about enough because because here it is because because here because here we go if you actually tell folk you trying to deal with you folk get the audacity to get mad mm-hmm. because they don't think you care that's selfish i i care mm-hmm. I and I said this at a former ch- at a former church I pastored, and I said this. People used to come to me, tell me when they were going on vacation and all that stuff, because for whatever reason in in the community mm-hmm. and the way that things had always been, that's what they would do and tell the pastor they were rolling out and that they'd be back in about a week or so. And guess what? I told the first person that told me that. I said, "Well, God bless you and bring back some sun." Yeah. And they were like, "Huh?" I was like, "No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, but I want, but I want." And I had to explain to them, "I want you to understand that that when I treat you like this, when it comes to you going on a vacation, is because you got to do what you got to do. And I pray that when I go somewhere yep. to deal with myself, <laughs> that you give me the same consideration. Yep. I'm trying to set an environment and a standard that says." I support you 100% in going to an island, going somewhere sunny. If you like being in the woods, going to the woods and being secluded, whatever you got, I support it 100%. So when I do it for me, I don't need to hear nothing from you. So, so, yeah, so... We have to be able to continue to do the work. And sometimes doing the work is taking care of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And acknowledging, having the humility to say, I need a break. Yes. To say, I can't just keep pushing just because. And, and, and God help us. Wait, wait. God help us if we actually were a healthy church mm. where we could actually stop for a minute and say, you know what? We may not need to do all this stuff right now. Yeah. Because if we don't take care of ourselves individually and collectively, we ain't gonna get stuff done. Right. Look at it. Look at this stuff that can look. People actually took me <laughs> up on this. Yeah, they did. Look at this. <laughs> got too got too much to do to be fully focused on you. That's right. Sister Ruth said, "My brother used to tell me, don't tell me your problems. I got problems of my own." <laughs> Here comes sister, but I care about others, but I'm, yeah, but I'm with you. My house is too busy with stuff and other. Yes, we all have stuff and it doesn't. And, and here's the thing. Don't miss what I'm saying. Right, right. I'm, I'm going to bring up another, another, um, another phrase that I've been using a lot because of just recent events. There is such a thing. There's, there's, it's two pieces. There is caretaker fatigue and compassion fatigue. Yep. Mm-hmm. They are real. Yeah. 
They are 100% real. Yep. Jesus. If you have both, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, look, 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 listen, listen. It's taking a whole lot in me right now not to just get up and walk off this thing for about two minutes and then come back. So you understand that's real stuff. But what we have, but the, but the culture we have promoted in the church, I'm not even going to deal with the world. I'm going to talk about the church. Here's what we've promoted. Here's what we've promoted. You can be going through all that stuff, but guess what we usually say? Mm. You got to press through. Oof. Oof. You got to, you got, you got to, you got to press, press your way. Yeah, yeah, press your way. Press, press, press what? Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> and you want me, and, and you want me to just give it all up because you can't recognize you see, you see what I mean? Yep. And here we are. We got a whole church full. We got a whole church full of people that are going through all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't know how to don't know how to sit down nowhere. They getting more and more upset by the second. Yep. And why are they getting more and more angry by the second? Because someone done asked them to do what? Another thing. But I, go, no, ahead. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was literally just, <laughs> I was, I was literally going to say that like that sort of segues into our next point, because as you, as you do the work to, as you do that personal work, yes, there are going to be discoveries that happen. Yes. That you then have the ability to bring Back to the body, back to the group, back to the community. Hit that third point, man. And you so that third point is do not be, do not become a gatekeeper to helpful information. We we do this we we yeah. sometimes we have a mentality yeah. that only the pastor has a right to certain information, mm -hmm. which is why we got to sit and we got to listen because only he has access. When the fact of the matter is, is that we all have the ability to engage with it in our own context. Now, granted, there are ways that that can go south real fast. Yes. But when you engage and encounter the word as your full, fully realized, honest, transparent, unique self, there are going to be things that you as a unique individual uncover that other people are not going to be able to uncover. That's right. That's right. And so when you can then bring that back to the body, it makes us collectively stronger. Yes. That's all I was going to say. No, no, you in, you in there. And and the problems that occurred now, because I can tell you now, another 10, 15 years is going to be another shift. Mm -hmm. Because because you can, you can best believe almost every 20 years there's a shift in how church is. And and here's what and here's what makes that and here's what makes that bad. Church is usually twenty years behind. I'm about to say we we can't. So keep we're really <laughs> so we're really forty years behind, yeah. right? Almost at all times. But in another twenty years, there'll be another shift and another shift. And people say they're trying to be on the cutting edge. And you see how people are doing things. And and we say they're cutting edge. No, they're not cutting edge. They decided to do something that others were unwilling to do because they just decided. And some of them don't gatekeep the information. They like look. When we started, when we started during the pandemic, I can remember maybe two weeks in, two weeks in, two, not a month, two, I had friends of mine and colleagues hit me up on the phone, on social media, and ask me straight up. They're like, bro, how y'all doing this? And all I did was I said, bro, we only got two cameras. A couple mics and a, and a computer, and they were like, "For real? Like, yeah, no, no, bro, just two cameras." <laughs> I did not gatekeep the information, and then those and some of those brothers, they ended up taking their stuff to the next level. Right, right. Some of those, and and I'm like, "Cool, you you didn't you didn't took your stuff. You 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 see what I mean? You and and they made it and they made it work." 
because we didn't gatekeep the information. <laughs> Miss Anderson said, and Patrick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, no, but that, but that's it. But but this is the thing, and 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 since you bring bring him up, and we all and we always talk behind the scenes. Here it is: we've said to people, we're not gatekeeping what we do. Yeah. If you want to do something similar to the Safe House podcast, what are we gatekeeping for? Right. We're gonna tell you what we do, but then you can take whatever works. Your context gonna be completely different. So different, yeah. and it's like everybody can't do what we do. But my God, don't gatekeep the information. Right, yeah. The information is still available, yeah. Right. So if you end up being in a mess and it, and it just so happens you know what kind of mess that is because you've lived through that mess, yep. it is your responsibility mm -hmm. to help somebody yep. get through the mess. The, the mess you try to forget. Yep. That if you talk to the right person in your family, they're going to they're gonna tell it all and then they're going to expose you. You can do something. Why would you hold it to yourself? Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead, sis. We get to a certain point in the church where we think that we uh, have been here long enough. Like you said, we on the evangelism committee. You know, we singing. We doing all this stuff on, on the altar, right? Mm -hmm. And then when somebody else comes in and they're having a hard time, we tell them to pray or whatever. But we don't tell them, I've been there. You know, I know your journey. I already been through that journey. Right. Because that would help them understand that everybody in here, they might not look like me, but they already had the problem. Because I tell people, you don't even know their story. Their story is worse than yours sometimes. Yeah. So if we would be more truthful to people about, or at least help them know that we've been through that journey, that ain't none of us just came down here with our angel wings on and we all that. We have a lot of dirt and everything, but this is a hospital. This is the hospital. Some yeah. of us have been in intensive care for years. Jesus. <laughs> and some of us are still down in, in, the, in the emergency room. Lord. Because they can't figure out what to do with us. So if we really paid attention to what was really going on with us when other people came through the door that was looking, for, seeking help out, then we would be further along as Christians and as a church. And that's you, all the church. And you, ju you just used an example that, and here, see, this is, I love how, I love how God works you because you, you, you call this place a hospital. You ready for this? Do you know why some people stay in the ER or they stay in certain spots in the hospital for way longer than they should? It's not because it's not because the medicine or the treatment ain't there, but because they're not honest about their actual condition. Mmm. Mmm. They, 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 I'm, but that's, but that's, but that's yeah. real. They're not honest because you get nurses coming in, right? And I've been to enough hospitals in the last month and a half to know the drill. They come in, they ask, what is your pain tolerance? What are your symptoms? What are you feeling? What did, what happened? They make you tell the story at least 10 times, over and over, no matter who the nurse is, you get other nurses, other people, they ask you what, same information. They ask you your birth date, they ask you your name, they ask you all that information constantly, multiple times, no matter how many times they come in. They'll tell you, I know you're sick and tired of this, but <laughs> what's your name, what's your, what's, your, you know, what's your birth date, what's your this, what's your that, how are your symptoms? Are you still here or here or here or here? They ask you about the symptoms because they're trying to figure out how to treat the actual, here it is, not the symptoms, but the actual underlying condition. So, 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 so church, here we go. You come on Sunday. There's a, <laughs> there's a Sunday morning crowd. That's not the Wednesday crowd. Mm -hmm. And the Sunday morning crowd, only certain folk can get to me. And I'm not saying because I don't try to go to folk. I'm just saying some folk, they come, they say hi, and then they leave. Other people, they will come to me when I ain't ready and try to tell it all. And even though I may have my own conflict with, because of my personality, right, at least – 
They're telling me their symptoms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I, as pastor, not as Charles Ferguson, right. but as pastor, I can go to God and listen and say, God, your people are telling me about all this stuff. Yeah. God, you got the list. You got folk talking about they're dealing with depression. They're dealing with this. They're dealing with this. They're dealing with this. Now, God, what are you going to prescribe or what is the treatment plan? I'm taking you behind the scenes of what it really means to pastor people. Because when you get honest, there people don't realize, I don't even know half the time what God is going to say on a Sunday. I work on stuff, but I don't know how it's going to address whatever's in in the crowd, yeah. but the folk that have been honest with God mm-hmm. usually end up coming to me and say, that was, the, they don't say it this way, but they, but they might start saying that, that was the treatment I needed. Mm-hmm. And when they leave out and come back next week, and if I ask them, well, how, how's it going? Or as the other question might go, is it well with your soul? And they mm-hmm. say, I have never had a week so good in my life because that word, what? Changed my situation. But you got to overcome the shame of being fully exposed Woo! first. You got to tell, you got, the, Bi- the, <laughs> the Bible says, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, confess your faults one to another and pray. Why? Because the prayers of the righteous have great power. In their work, I don't need to what use what you tell me to over to lord it over you. Right. If you tell me what you're going through, my job then is to what pray. And in other instances, if God says through the prayer, I want you to intercede or advocate, then that's the next step on God's behalf. But otherwise, at minimum, I'm supposed to what pray. And that's our final point. Right. Sow the right seed to yield a strong harvest. Mm-hmm. That's the last thing. Go right into that one. <laughs> that's how that's how you know this thing blessing is blessing my whole soul mm-hmm. thing. If you want to see change, sow the right seed. All right, let me cl- let me let me just clear it all, okay? Since we've been clearing it all tonight, let me clear it all. As well. If if the Bible is true, where it says train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. And if your limited theological view is, and I and I say that with respect, Mm -hmm. because everybody has limitations in their the in their theological view. But if your limited theological view is that because you have not seen the child that you said that you put something in and they don't come back or they're not at somebody's church, if that's your view, don't look at them, look at the seed. Oof. Wow. There it is. Stop looking at them. And start looking at the seed. What were you planting? <sighs> That's another episode, Pastor. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> I think I think that may end up being next week. But I but I need but 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 I, but I need but I need people to understand this. And this is and this is not a rebuke. This is an observation Absolutely. based upon the text. Yep. The observation is. It says, if you sow to the flesh, it's going to reap corruption. corruption. Yeah. You sow to the spirit, it's going to what? Reap everlasting life. It literally says that in the Bible. <laughs> it's in the book. You, we read it. You sow to the flesh. In other words, you sow according to your feelings, then guess what you're going to get? Your feelings. You're going to get stuck in your feelings, right? (laughs) Think about what you said to that young person when they were in a stage where they could have learned the love of God and that thing could have taken root. What did you tell them? 
Okay, let me get it off my chest. Let me let me get it all the way off my chest. You talking about young adults don't know nothing and dot, 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 dot. No, they had to try to uproot some of the mess that was in them. Talking about they don't want to be. Well, of course they don't want to be in a place where they got seed that was as. I, I feel I. I feel the spirit of that old farmer that I met years ago at that Bexley Farmer's Market mm. who lives off the grid. Mm. His words are coming right back to me. He said, he said to me and Marissa, we would go to the farmer's market. That was our date night. We was broke, broke, but we had enough money to make sure that we went to the farmer's market. That was our treat to ourselves around payday. Yeah. And we would go and we saw this man and he was selling meat. He was selling vegetables. He was selling fruit. And he said, you can taste the difference in what I'm putting out here compared to a lot of other people. And I said, why is that? He said, because I use real seed. I'm like, okay. And, then, and he gave me a lesson. You ready? He said, here's the lesson. He said, do you know the difference? And at that time, I didn't really because I didn't pay attention. He said, do you know the difference between a GMO and a non-GMO entity? I was like, not really. No. <laughs> not written up. At that time, I did because I didn't pay attention. Yeah. And he said, well, GMOs are genetically modified organisms. They're genetically modified. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm with you. And he said, when you have a piece of fruit, if it's real, it's supposed to have seed. Mm hmm. But wait, 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 but wait a minute. It's supposed to have seed, seed as in plural. But if it's a GMO, it was produced from an organism that only places within the fruit a terminator seed. What is a terminator seed? A terminator seed means that you get the batch from that seed and it doesn't reproduce and it doesn't have the potential to reproduce anything. Oof. Oof. If I have a real piece, if I have a real apple, I should be able to harvest the seeds from said apple, plant those seeds in the ground, care for those seeds so they might grow and reproduce. And reproduce. Yeah. But think about what you might have planted in somebody along the way. Why don't they want to come back to church? Because of the things you said might have been a Terminator seed. West Ohio Conference just had a has had a conference on Saturday. Woo. You know, from nine to four. It was, it was a whole day. Yeah. Uh, it's called Generate. It was a great conference. Yeah. Talking about how we grow younger. Mm-hmm. And some of the harsh reality of that is understanding how some of our churches that want to grow younger, the reason why they aren't in a position to do that is because of some of the seeds that they themselves have planted. So they've basically have planted GMOs. Mm. And, and, and people will be like, well, where are GMOs in the Bible? When you try to create somebody in your own image and like this, we call it witchcraft. You want folk to look sound and be like you. No, no, no. Let me say it better. You want someone to look sound and act like your preferences. But you don't want them to look sound and act like God. Yeah, someone who's already been created in God's image, you're trying to recreate into your own image. And now that we have now that we've let all these GMOs get on the loose, we now live in a world where we're trying to fight to let people know that the real healthy stuff comes from a seed that can never die. And we don't know how to care for it. So then we have a conference like Generate. We have all these things that now talk in that growing sense. Why? Because now we got to deal with the fact that we are we really planting the right seed. 
And that for us becomes the challenge. Because if we are not giving and planting the right seed, we are not going to reap the harvest we need to reap. And, and, may, and dare I say, as we close, because we got we to gotta shut this one down because y'all right. Y'all right about one thing. This may, this may come up again next week in some way. If anything, we need to step back and think and think to ourselves. Do we need to learn how to get the right seed out again? Do we need to learn how to handle the seed properly? And this may be the scripture. I don't know. I'm not telling you if it is going to be or not. Yeah. But the scripture comes to my mind, some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. So if God ultimately gives the increase, are we doing what we need to do in its proper order for the increase to happen? Does God trust me or trust us with the increase? Have we stocked up on the right seed or do we need to reevaluate what we got in store? And just to bring it full circle, every farmer, I imagine, knows that even with the right seed, in, in terms of keeping your humility, yes, you can have the right seed, and sometimes that harvest just doesn't come out the way that you think it's going to come mm -hmm. out. But that doesn't mean that you don't stop working to make sure that people have the food and things that they need. And so like, if we're going to advocate for people, we got to know that sometimes it's, just, it's not going to work the way that we think it's going to work. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't remove the responsibility of us to continue to advocate for people. So then we end this way as our benediction, if you will. So don't grow weary mm -hmm. in doing well. Mm -hmm. Because in due season, we will reap if we don't give up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God bless you and thank you for being with us tonight. This is Safe House Podcast. We'll be back next week, 630, online, in person, here at Claire United Methodist Church. Have a good night. Love y'all.